Hare Krishna. Question How is the Schrodinger's cat paradox related with spirituality and consciousness? You mentioned in one of your lectures that the Schrodinger's cat paradox uh, proves the reality of consciousness. Can you explain this? Answer Firstly, this is a complex concept. Uh, both the concept of uh, Schrodinger's cat and the concept of consciousness as it is applied over here. So, uh, this will be answer will be quite technical. First point is that the Schrodinger's cat is a thought exercise. So, in quantum physics, uh, whether <coughs> whether a particular thing exists or not that is largely dependent on the observation so <clears throat> how this is so actually is something which is not been understood by physicists and many physicists are saying that it can't even be understood but the point is it is something which is right now that so Einstein put it that I would like to believe that the moon continues to exist even if I am not looking at it so according to according to uh, a literal interpretation of quantum physics you know if there is no observer then there is no observed reality so the moon doesn't exist if we don't look at it this concept uh, how does it <clears throat> how does such a bizarre idea come into advanced physics that is illustrated through the schrodinger's cat paradox so <clears throat> suppose a cat is kept in a <clears throat> closed container and then there is a <clears throat> there is a fatal uh, radioactive element uh, radioactive element which whose radioactive degeneration will lead to fatal radiations which will kill the uh, cat but the radioactive element is such, this is a thought exercise now that if this, is, this radioactive element is such that if the uh, that there is 50 percent chance that the radioactive element may deteriorate, degenerate, uh, decay in it in the in the specified time period of the experiment, and if it uh, if it if it decays, then the cat dies. If it doesn't decay, the cat lives. Now there is no way that we can know whether the cat is al alive or it is dead till we open the uh, container, open the box in which it is kept. So now. Uh, when we come to when we actually the experiment is conducted and then the box is open at that time we come to know okay the cat is alive or the cat is dead so now according to Schrodinger's equation or now Schrodinger gives this cat paradox to illustrate that actually what happened so before the cat was put in the box it was alive then uh, then when the box was opened then the state was determined it is alive or it is dead so then what happened in the state in between and during that time its state is indeterminate and so now because that indeterminate state always stays indeterminate what, uh, what uh, quantum physicists propose at least uh, some quantum physicists a mainstream body of quantum physicists proposes that actually when the box is opened at that time the cat becomes alive or it becomes dead so the uh, rather than saying that at the time of opening of the box that is the time when we determine whether the cat is alive or dead so rather than saying that what it is said is that that is the time when the cat becomes alive or dead so now we may say no the cat uh, became alive or dead much earlier uh, a cat the cat if it had died it would have, it would have died any time in between but the point is uh, <clears throat> observation becomes tied with the observe observe observer within quantum physics why because it is only when uh, there is an observation that the quantum physics equations they collapse it's a whole technical concept but they collapse in a particular way and then a particular result emerges so now what does this imply for from a spiritual perspective from the perspective of consciousness no conventional physics or we could that is normally called as classical physics or Newtonian physics that focused primarily on the idea that 
the ob there is an objective world out there and by repeated observation and experimentation one could come to know the world as it exists outside there and one doesn't so that means uh, if there is an objective world then the subjectivity subjectivity means the idea that okay I am an observer who is observing and I am, my observation may become biased so subjectivity can be decreased and removed to the extent that we can bring in object to that extent there is a, there is a dis, there is a there is a distance between the observer and the observed to such an extent that the who is the observer will not matter the same observation will come irrespective of who is observing and in that way consciousness because for observation there has to be consciousness so the conscious the role of consciousness gets minimized and eliminated by this particular kind of reasoning however the problem turned out that turned out with this kind of reasoning is that observation and observer are inextricably connected in quantum physics you know, because various reasons and there are related which we can understand there are others which we can't understand unless we go into technicalities of quantum physics uh, at a very simple level we could say that quantum physics often deals with phenomena which are so uh, so small in their dimensionality uh, that the very act of observation affects them of uh, consider a simple example that suppose we wanted to measure the temperature of water in a lake now we might put some desire some object in the lake and try to measure the temperature so we put some some thermo some variant of a thermometer uh, adapted for that purpose and then we measure the temperature so now the temp the thermometer itself is of a slightly different temperature before it was put in that the thermometer may be at a much higher temperature and if the it's a frozen lake or near freezing lake its temperature is much lower so the idea of putting a thermometer in the lake is that the lake's temperature will change the thermometer's temperature now at the same time the thermometer being at a higher temperature heat energy will also flow from the from the thermometer to the lake and the lake's temperature can also change but because the lake is so big and the thermometer is so small now a thermometer may not be exactly the same instrument but a thermometer is a general term i'm using that which is used to measure temperature thermal energy the measurer of thermal energy thermometer so the point is that the act of measuring can also affect the measured object but because the effect on the measured object the lake the effect of the thermometer's higher temperature on the lake is so negligible is so small as to be negligible so what we focus on is when you put in thermometer what is the change in thermometer's temperature we don't bother that the thermometer's temperature will change the lake's temperature so this is fair all fair at the level of uh, classical physics and therefore large objects but when we go into microscopic objects then at that particular point the very act of observation affects the observer the very act of observation uh, not the observe the very act of observation of affects not the observer but the observed object so for example if you want to know the position of an electron within an atom then we send some electromagnetic waves towards that so now as soon as the electromagnetic waves collide with the electron what happens by that is the electrons position gets determined because the electromagnetic waves get reflected back but the very contact of the electromagnetic energy with the electron causes the velocity of that electron to change and that's why the we may know the position but we cannot know the velocity because the, the act of knowing the position changes the velocity so that's why there is the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle which says that the position and the velocity both cannot be known simultaneously now taking this principle uh, these are uh, with respect to practical limitations uh, of measure the process of measuring but if you take this to a conceptual level then a quantum physics holds that the very act of observation affects the observed reality so because uh, according to quantum physics things don't exist at things everything is just waves that is the fundamental difference between quantum physics and uh, 
Newtonian <coughs> and say relativity physics. Neuro relativity physics proposes that there are objects, things which exist made of matter. Whereas quantum physics proposes that what exists essentially is waves. But uh, so these waves collapse into objects the moment there is an observer. And if there is no observer, things exist simply as waves. Now these are in quantum physics, quantum physics itself a complex concept and what I am giving is a uh, bare bones explanation which is a very uh, which is quite simple uh, simplified explanation uh, I won't go I'm not into technicalities here but the point is that the whole concept of the world as we observe it comes about because there is the observer and the observer causes the waves to collapse into things this is again as it said a simplified explanation but the point is in quantum physics the world as we ex perceive it cannot exist without a perceiver and so consciousness becomes a fundamental reality within the worldview of quantum physics and that's how quantum physics proves the reality of consciousness in a uh, in a very theoretically sophisticated way, quite different from the way consciousness may be proven by say the near-death experiences or out-of-body experiences. So this is like a major change at the very foundations of physics and that's why this change when consciousness becomes recognized as a fundamental reality then the whole concepts of foundational concepts of physics will be revolutionized and expanded and that will be the revolution of consciousness thinkers many thinkers have stated that will be as consequential as the copernican revolution copernican revolution was several centuries ago thank you hare krishna